Susie. Oh, hi. Episode 585. How's Sarah? Oh, I love that number. Mm-hmm, it's a good one. Yeah, it's nice. Let's not be optimistic about it, though. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, well, I want to uh-uh. say I'm not going to be optimistic about anything, but I'm so happy now that I moved to Colorado. I can't make any promises. My gosh, you're riding high? I'm riding as high as the elevation, Susie. <laughs> Which is high. Sarah's riding mile high. Mile high. What? How is Susie? Before How? we dive no, into that no, whole no. story, no, we I'm always fine. start with me. Yeah, but I have a very boring life. I am basically in lockdown. All you people going out to clubs and stuff, well. Who's going out to clubs? People. I see them. Who? <laughs> Our listeners? No, no. Probably, but. I'm not saying uh, you guys can't go out to clubs or don't want to or shouldn't go out to clubs. I'm just saying, if you're anything like me, you just heard that word and you were like, ugh. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. They're gallivanting. There is gallivanting, gallivanting going on. As if, That's fair. As if it is safe. And I am not. Mm. I'm doing the opposite. I'm very cozy in my snow-filled oh, property. And that's all for now. I mean, nothing is going to happen because there I'm not leaving. There is nothing better, though. It is safe I mean, socializing, yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, but yes. a cozy house, and maybe because it's new to me, but you just saying a cozy snow house, snowy yeah. house. Oh, I know that house of yours with those big windows and like. <gasps> well, and I'm so Imagine. thankful that I have the luxury of being able to stay home, which yeah. not everybody has. And those people I'm not including in this conversation. I'm talking about the gallivanters. Right, right. We're not including the people who are working, people who are not, who are gallivanting yeah working. that is yes. so funny i'm just gonna keep saying because children all under five today. still can't get vaccines and it's yeah. like it's not yeah. over for them just because you're tired of this right. doesn't mean oh we, gosh we shouldn't i heard that based on the numbers that we've had recently it's one person every like 40 40 seconds oh mm-hmm. i was gonna say minutes because i was like there's no way yeah. it can be seconds yeah but it is seconds because yeah, i know man. that's it oh it's i seconds. thought that was it so sad Oh, man. But we need to keep your high going. So tell me oh, yeah. right, how right, you're right, acclimating right, right, right. to this totally new environment. Suze, everybody. I am. Th- I think everybody. I may have found yeah. a, I don't want to say cure, but I want to say <laughs> a way to alleviate a large percentage of the symptoms that I experience from ADHD and being a go, go, go person. Oh, okay. Here's why. Mm-hmm. I have never lived in the snow before. Mm-hmm. When you live in 78 degree weather, 75 degree weather all year round, and you don't have to change yeah. to leave the house, I don't pause between anything I do. It's, right. you know, like everything, you know, everything is a race. Everything is like just doing things so fast. Yeah. Being in the snow has forced me to slow down. Yeah. In a way that I had no idea how much I needed. Wow. Uh, you like the slowing part. Well, I need it. I need it. it it's, yeah. it's, it's, it makes me, it's, there's, I, uh, oh, Susie. Yes. I thought about Mr. Rogers. Yeah. It's his taking off the sweater thing. Yeah. You know, when we watched the documentary that I cried my eyes out to, I'm just going to think of it right now and I want to cry. Um, <laughs> won't you be and, my neighbor or whatever? Yeah. Won't you be mm-hmm. my neighbor? And he talks about like how transitions are important and how there was something that everything was intentional, you know, and he takes off of his, he takes off his sweater to show that we're changing from, you know outside time to inside yes. time mm-hmm. i did not have that and now i have that and it has slowed me down i feel like i'm more present i feel like i i can just take it i don't feel as rushed That's because nice. i have to slow down i see what you're saying yeah the downside of that the flip side Yes. It's just that everything is Being such light. a production. Yeah, like yeah. everything is so laborious. Oh, 
And like I always talk about with, you know, how I hate taking my shoes off in houses, which our Canadian friends think is so disgusting. And I think part of the reason why they are so adamant oh. about taking your shoes off yeah. is because if you live in a cold climate, it is often very sludgy and messy yep. and gross and you have to take your shoes off. There are so many funny things. Well, funny to me because I've never experienced them or I'm like, huh. What's this tray by the door for? Oh, God. Oh, I know what that's for now. You're like, <laughs> like yeah, you're like acclimating discovering to a new culture. Snow. And it, it really, it's a whole, like, there's like a whole science to, of course, people are like, duh, Sarah. But it just, I've just never experienced it and I'm just in awe of it. And I, lo- I just love it. I am okay. the worst driver on ice slash snow, yeah. I have to get a new car. Right. If anybody's interested <laughs> in a not four wheel drive Jeep, yeah. I have one for you. Selling it, real good price. Because <laughs> no, I can't. I can't be coming up to the mountains all the time and be like slipping and sliding all over the road over here. I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm a nervous Nelly out there. How do you do it? Yeah, you'll get used to it though. I. Uh, I don't know about that. Really? Every single time I push it's... on the brakes, I go slipping and sliding. I really do think the four wheel drive will make everything. Yeah. Fun. Okay. It's time to get a new car. God damn <laughs> yeah. It. Just paid that thing off. Ah. <laughs> Any hoodles. Okay. Well, here's what I want. I want you to let me know when you're sick of not living there, but sick of oh. the the transitions, as you call them. Yes. I I'm sure I will be. I'm sure. Like everything's like new and it's like exciting sure, and novelty. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and you know, I was thinking about too that the only times I ever came to the snow. When I was younger, growing up, the only time the only time I ever went to the snow, period, uh, or comma, was uh, uh, yeah, or not even. <laughs> there, don't put any punctuation there. You know what I'm saying, Just guys. Take a breath. Just take a breath. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> was when we were on like a fun vacation. So it feels like every day, like I'm waking up on vacation, and it's weird because you'd think Costa Rica would feel like that. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> I can see why. Though. Maybe it was the mysterious wetness and things that scurry. Yes. But, yeah. I don't Do know. Do you have a lot of people that follow you on Instagram that share your phobias? And like, are they freaked out? Oh. Do I'm they commiserate with you or no? Uh, th- I definitely got some commiseration about. Well, oh my gosh, this is an excellent <laughs> question. Isabel posted, shout out to Isabel, there, posted a, a poll that said which one would you rather have your house have in your house ghosts or cockroaches yes yes i saw that poll mm-hmm. uh, i mean oh, how do you yeah what what yeah, do you i choose? agreed with you i cho- <laughs> wait didn't you choose ghosts yeah i chose ghosts because oh, yeah. those okay. cockroaches but still i mean i'm terrified i'm like though i feel like Hundred percent chance of cockroaches being gross, disgusting, creepy, absolutely terrifying. Yeah, fifty eh, fifty with the ghosts. Yes, and I've never you... had a ghost crawl all over me. Oh, oh, Susie, right? you're bringing me right back. I'm triggered. She's got hives. Oh, fucking a. I'm just saying, I agree with you. That's all. One thing though yeah. that doesn't disgust me at all is liquid IV. Uh, I would like to personally thank Liquid IV for keeping me alive as I transition to high altitude because I have not suffered dehydration one time that I've been here. And I know because I always get really bad headaches. I am staring at my box of Liquid IV. Well, technically it's like a package bag of Liquid IV right now. My delicious passion fruit flavor. (gasps) I love you, Liquid IV. Well, hey, I want to know about that, about like. Do you eventually get used to the altitude thing and then you're not as, like, mealy-mouthed or what? No. No. Oh, it's, like, Here's forever? The thing. For, no, it's not. Oh, I don't yeah. even know if it's – I think it's the altitude, yes. But it's also that every ounce of moisture gets sucked out of your body here. I don't know hmm. how. I Like, there, the, my hair is so dry, everything. And I just realized, oh, this has to start on the inside, huh? If I want to have hydrated skin – it's not going to work to just slap on a bunch of moisturizer. Uh-uh. You got to start inside <laughs> so with hydrating. doing a holistic approach. Yeah. And yeah. it is really like that's the thing. I am, I am drinking my liquid IV to stay hydrated so that I do not get chapped lips. I think what you're experiencing though is the effect of running heaters 
because heaters <gasps> are what oh. takes the moisture out of the air. No, but even outside. Oh. I don't know. I'm it's just saying dry. this. It's dry. Dry air. It's dry. It, okay. You know what? I didn't know that about the heater. See, I don't know. Well, that doing. definitely doesn't help because yeah. we, we just got a humidifier and it does make a big difference. Yeah. Well, there are but, three of those running in this house. I'm okay, good. Them. Yeah. But, I mean, if you want to hydrate your body, yes. the humidifier is not going to help. So what no. you need is liquid IV. These little packets you pour into your water and they hydrate you two to three times faster than just a regular glass of water. And they taste way better because they have all these different delicious flavors. It's great for hangover recovery. It's great for athleticism. It is great for just daily life or giving to kids instead of the garbage sugary stuff. And uh, you'll love it. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code CANDY at checkout. That's 25% of anything you order when you use promo code CANDY at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com. Promo code CANDY. We love you, Liquid we IV. do love you. Um, okay. So, yes. It's so been wonderful. Happy. I'm I'm snow. I went on a first date snowboarding, Susie. Would you say that that's a good first date activity? It was great. Yeah. I loved it. I mm-hmm. thought it was wonderful because you get the ride up on the chairlift, which okay. depending on which chairlift you take is like 5, 10, 15 minutes sometimes. Oh, wow. Maybe 10 minutes max. Um, I don't know. Who knows how long those things are? I, I had no-, no idea. I thought they were like two minutes. Oh, yes. It depends on which ones you take. Some No, they're, they, they're a while. You sit on there for a minute. And oh. it, um, one, one of the resorts that I'm hitting up with my pass is, uh, <sighs> has the longest uh, uh, run. I did it yesterday. It's three and a half miles. Holy heck. It's so fun. Three yeah. and a half miles. Just, I want to say like, bombing whenever, it down the hill. But in, when so you're on the slow. date, though, you're oh, like yeah, at yeah. the top of the hill. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, bye. Is that no, how it goes? you're kind of together. I mean, like we're kind of together, and I'm like following him, or he's following me, and we're kind of okay. like, you know, and uh, yeah, and you can still kind of hear each other, and and it's it's just fun. It's kind of like I don't know. It feels like you know how when you go bowling, <laughs> you're like kind of taking turns, and yeah, you're sort of like passing each other in a way. But there's like an activity that you're doing, and it was kind of nice. It's like take the ride up, ask some questions, like share. Then process on the ride down. <laughs> then, think about, <laughs> then think about some more questions. Think about other yeah. things you want to talk about. And then we ended the day with a drink at the lodge. Nice. Or at the, you know, little like whatever, the lodge. Does this guy called. have a, a pass also? He, do, uh, he does have a pass. Is this what everybody there does? They all have yes. passes? Okay. Yeah. But we went to, I don't know if he has the same pass as me because we went to a different place, but he had, he had like passes to that place. And so, yeah, people have got them. Like everybody's like. Everybody's you got in the your, loop. Yeah. It's kind of like, are you icon or epic? Is wow. The, what are you? I am an epic pass holder. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so Is shout that out the to superior uh, all the, one? Uh, no, no, I, it, I, oh my God, I spent so long looking up all the, this is like really to make the, I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, there's icon passes. Usually there are a lot of people in California get those because they have access to like mammoth Certain and all ones, those yeah. ones. Um, but, uh, uh, this one, it said, if you're somebody who has the ability to go to the mountains that are close during the week then you mm-hmm. should get the epic pass. And right. I do have that ability. Okay. So, Because, man, on Sunday night, it's basically here. Like, everybody in Denver or in, I don't know, places outside, like, right around Denver, all go to the mountains on the weekend. Yeah. And then on Sunday, they all leave. Like, I, mm-hmm. th- I had no idea this was, like, a thing. It reminds me of how it is on the weekends. Uh, Fridays, like going to Vegas from LA. Yes, it was a. Yeah. P- it's a parking lot to get yeah. out of there. I mean, you, it doubles plus your time home, which still is like not even that much. It's like driving in LA traffic. So, hmm. but I couldn't even believe. And then I went on Monday morning, like after, like Sunday, I was with my friend Jesse, and we went to just like walk around the little like resort village and everything. And then, uh, and then the next day, I went by myself. On Monday, this place was a ghost town. Like, I was on a run all by myself. Like, wow. like oh, that's fun. This is That sounds empty. very peaceful. It's so nice. Good. And just like how I say trail running and 
dirt bike riding and all those kind of things are so great for ADHD because they make you stay present. Like you can't be thinking about anything else because uh, you'll crash and like die. Yes. So snowboarding does the same thing. I have to stay mm-hmm. like, and I'm I'm still very you know a beginner slash intermediate, but more beginner. And uh, uh, I have to talk to myself the whole time. I'm like, okay, now go on your toes. Okay, now your heels. Okay, now your toes. What? Okay, now your heels. Oh, yeah, God. I have to like, talk to myself anxiety. the whole entire time. And it's, it's good. And then I'm like, I'm trying to not learn bad habits right now. And if you're somebody who's been snowboarding before, you know there are some bad habits that you can pick up, especially with turning and things like that. So I'm trying to unlearn all the bad habits that I had that just like make it hard and make your legs tired. And I'm trying to like, this sounds like a combination of all of my least favorite things. Yeah. Kind of, kind of maybe (laughs) the cold. What do you hate about it more? Most what's the, what do you tell me what you hate about all that? Cause like, those are all, I like that sounds so much fun to me. We're, and we're so similar yet. So different. (laughs) I think the chairlift part sounds nice. But then, <laughs> like the, and the apres ski part and the churl. right in the, the lodge, <laughs> right the hot toddies afterwards. No, like the cold number one, all that gear you have to wear, oh, the right? Gear. Right, uh, Suze, I yeah. arrived to my date a half an hour early, and oh see, I no. was two minutes, maybe thirty seconds, like late. I was right on time because oh and I, I told him i'm like thank god i got here a half an hour early because this shit took my boots were brand new they're so cool i love them so much uh but they took like no joke like five minutes to put on because I, it's like oh but it loosened them See? and you step it up and mm-hmm. it's like oh and then the worst the name of the game is don't get sweaty why is that the name of the game because sweaty equals cold wet, and wet right. equals cold so it. you have to like strip up like on my drive there and I'm nervous because it's the first date. So I've got the nervous sweats. And so I'm driving <laughs> there in it, it's it's zero degrees. You probably saw my story. It's zero degrees outside. Yeah. I'm driving here and I have uh, the windows down and the seat, the seat vents on cooling me off because I'm like, wow. I'm going to get sweaty. And if I'm sweaty and I'm cold, I do not want to be, all I have in my mind is the picture of me when I was like 12 years old, whining and complaining and being like, I don't want to go. Cause I was like, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't athletic. Nope. <laughs> you know, I was like miserable and such a whiner and I just don't want to be that person. So I'm doing everything I can. Like, okay, we're not going to be cold. We're going to stay dry. We're going to like do all the things. And like, I got my hand warmers and I, so, you know, it is a shit ton of equipment. And there's so many things that can go wrong. Like you could break your face. After I did, (laughs) I did fall. I did have a little bit of a, it wasn't even a crazy yeah, you fall. Had, you, need, you said you need knee pads now. I, I just, I was on a part that was just icy and it was like this, just this groomed flat, like catwalk part. And I just caught an edge and then went for like forward and uh, fell right onto my knees. And it just, there, it was like, there was a moment where my body was like, Oh, how do you like falling at 35, Sarah? Yeah. You're going to be 36 do, in a, in a see, couple weeks. I don't want to do anything that requires or is improved with knee pads. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking, I'm like, okay, I think if I, if I have some knee pads, then I think I'll oh be, it, it's the, it's that. And I, it's so funny when I was in Costa Rica, I was telling my mom, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to like, I, my, I want to learn how to do a backflip. I could probably do that. Right. How hard could it be? Yeah. You know, I was talking to you about you and I you were like, we could yeah. do it on a trampoline. Like what, what, I mean, come on. Right? Okay, maybe that, that should be our goal, though. Right, that's what I said. See, this is why I love you. <laughs> See, because you wrote me into this shit. I just got done saying I don't want to do anything like this. And Sue's like, like, yeah, we're probably sounds- going to become like tandem stunt <laughs> riders <laughs> right. now. We're going to like do like backflips over each other. All right. Well, since your body is in pain, I have an idea for how you can recover more effectively. Please tell me. In my in my experience, yes, which is through the Theragun. <sighs> Because it is this amazing percussive therapy device that will help with those muscle tensions that you're experiencing, Sarah. Seuss, the guy that I went on a first date with <laughs> told me while we were on run, he's like, man, I'm really going to have to use my Theragun tonight. And I was like, oh, no. they're one of our sponsors. I totally said that. Soulmate. Yeah. I was like, 
Um, also, can you bring it next time? Cause- <laughs> <laughs> and use it on me. Yes. yes. Cause it is, it really is helpful with any kind of, uh, tension in your neck or your back and just the stress of everyday life. Or if you have, you know, any kind of athletic issue, Theragun is so great and it makes a great gift as well. Try Theragun for 30 days starting at $199. Go to therabody.com slash brain candy right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash brain candy. Therabody.com slash brain candy. And I told you I got Jordan one of these for Christmas and he is loving it. Yeah, rave reviews. Yeah, I think Lucas is jealous, so I think he's going to get that for his birthday. Wait, so does anyone else on the slopes ever... Wear knee pads, or is this a Sarah Rice oh, yeah. original? No, 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 no. Okay, there are people okay. are wearing knee pads, elbow pads, like underneath their stuff. Like if you're a beginner, for sure. They even have oh butt pads. Like you can wear these shorts or pants kind of things that are pads on the butt. And oh, my God. It's just – it's not even that like I, – I only want knee pads because the my knees are black and blue, and they were like – Swole. Like I was like, if I fall oh again, God. I might hurt them, and okay. I do not want to put myself out. That's why I'm taking the day off today. And oh my, <laughs> this is this is gonna be. I, I'm just. Uh, I'm learning a lot about my body. Um, I, think, I yeah, so go ahead. ahead. No, 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 no. no! Um, I, uh, I think after we're, I, I'm gonna have. I think I'm gonna go to the chiropractor today. Oh, see, just to like this get is, your like, life not is because apart. of snowboarding, but just to like get me like I've been very tense and very stressed and like. Yeah, you know, right. I think I'm just. I need to like. Th- okay, this is another thing that I'm. I am. I'm. A uh, uh, reason why I feel like Colorado is so great for me and so wonderful, and how. Um, we have to. Do these things. Yeah, I know. We have to find something. I combined so many things that we've talked about. I've had so many thoughts, Susan. Yes, and I'm trying Sarah. to like, like organize them all. You know, our I book love habit. what you're saying right now. Yes. All of these things, the ha- habit book, the mm-hmm. comfort crisis book. Yes. All of these things. We have to, like, we have to find something that is more important than yes. the being comfortable thing that pushes us through. For some people, it's their kids. They go, I want to be able – we hear that all the time. I want to be able to be a good example for my kids. I want to be able to run around and play with my kids. Yeah, what is your motivator that is greater than the pain or discomfort or whatever? And it can't be just, oh, you know, long-term health because what happens is like if if you were healthy or if you – you have to – you have to – you can't like rest on your laurels, I guess. You can't like just become complacent and like do the things. What worked for you at 20 is not going to work for you at 30, is not going to work at 40. You have to like keep adjusting. Yeah, and that's keep... what I'm saying. I couldn't I... agree more. I am, I, I almost feel like I want to cry because I, I want to like apologize to my body. Oh, why? Oh, because the past like three, and I know people are going to be able to relate to this. The past like three years, have yeah. been like survive, not thrive, you know, just yeah. get through it. And your body says like, I just want the quickest way to feel good. I want to, yeah. you know, have that cupcake or, you know, have that other glass of wine or whatever it is and, or not work out or just sit on the couch. And because our body wants to feel good right then, but we don't – it's those instant gratification things. Like I was talking about on the, what I learned being a caregiver and how it's so easy to go to those when those other things are cut off. We have to find something to push – to like motivate us because I, I saw how now that I want to do things that are like – these things that I love, my body like can't because it doesn't have the energy or like the muscle and the strength to do it when it totally did before. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that is so frustrating. And it feels like, like I, you know, oh, like ignored it for a long time. And it's well, like, <laughs> I think that it's so beautiful though, that you allowed like you have to have grace on yourself you yes, had you do there were these last few years have been horrific for people and we do what we have to do and the beauty of this story is that it's not over right and you, you just can find change that however you want 
Absolutely. And then the great thing is as soon as you start doing it, like it feels really good. So it's this like self-perpetuating kind of system that once you get – in both directions. Yes. You know, it will yes. keep – an object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest stays in re- at rest. Um, oh, that's funny because one of the stories I want to talk about was – about the laws of thermodynamics, and that's one of the law- Newton's laws. So you know, I feel like they're kind of related. Anyways, um, but so I, yeah, don't you agree with me that because we've been doing this show for so long, mm-hmm. and we've learned so much along the mm-hmm. way, and we've grown and aged and all that so jazz, much. and I've noticed like in the last six months, especially, just this true sense of putting the dots to connecting the dots. <gasps> Sue's like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. We have we I don't know if if it's we've read the exact right amount of articles for that. To like, yeah, I'm like, oh, well, you know how you know how when you're well, you know, because whenever you write a research paper, whenever you do any kind of, uh, uh, uh. what the heck is it called? Literary review. Mm-hmm. Um, that you're you, you read enough articles, you look at enough uh, uh previously written material to then be able to you know, write your own paper and like yeah, cite those and sources. It's not, and it's essentially like what we get to do on here and what all of our listeners get to do. Yeah. And we're just along the same journey that they are. Yes. And it's not epiphanic. Like, it's not like one day I was like, oh, no, I get it. It's just this slow roll where you start to connect the dots and you're like, yes. I'm starting to get this. Yep. And there'll Absolutely. be setbacks along the way. It's not like you're done. But I think you have more perspective. Yes. Mm-hmm. What, what is a recent one you've had? <sighs> like. Not to put you on the spot, but it's just, just so I, I general, totally agree with you and feel the same way. So You know, like even just the, the couple of books that you named, different yeah. themes that we've explored in book club and on the show where the answers are always the same. And so that. We keep repeating them. Well, you need to go yep. outside. You need to yep. move more. You need to um, have social relationships that are rewarding and get rid of toxic people. And if you hear them enough, you're like, oh, you're like, this is the oh, answer for all of this sick. stuff. Yes. And even health stuff where they're like, well, the way to prevent this is eat right, make sure you move your body, whatever. And you're like, oh, fuck, I actually have to do this because <laughs> there's a consensus. Yep. And then we talk about the people and the regrets at their at the end of their life yeah. and the people who have like the post-traumatic growth. It all makes sense. And you just have to – so this is, this is the part that I'm – this is where I'm at now with it. This is the kind of like the part that kind of made me emotional and why I say I have to apologize my body and myself. Mm-hmm. And then not just sit in that place of like misery or like – being apologetic, like move forward and then, okay, where do we go from here kind of thing. Um, but, uh, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Um, apologize. Oh, that now I have to hold boundaries with myself. I saw this and I, I wasn't even going to talk about, this was not on my list to talk about, but I feel like I, I want to share this because I'm going to find it. It was a, it was a post that I saw on Instagram, of course, and maybe not, of course, but you know how that is. Um, and it said boundaries with people also, ah, uh, yes. Boundaries with yourself look like, and not all of these applied to me, but some of them I was like, oh, fuck, yes. You know, I'm preaching all the time and I've, and I've done so much to set boundaries with other people and in my life and get rid of, uh, you know, uh, unhealthy relationships and and just you know, say this is how I, I would like to be treated, but you can't really do that if you're not taking care of yourself. And so the boundaries, this says boundaries with yourself look like not buying things you can't afford, keeping mm. the promises you make to yourself. That one, that's I'm huge. Terrib- huge. Yeah. That's a boundary. Mm. Keeping yeah. the promises. If I say I'm going to go to the chiropractor today, yeah. then I'm going to go to the chiropractor like you today. you gave yourself your word. That is what I'm going to do. And if I don't, then I'm somehow telling myself that I don't hold my own promises. And I don't yeah. like that it doesn't matter what you want to do because you're not going to do it anyway. And that over and over and over is a really deep message to your brain that can have some long-term 
Yeah, like, like self-worth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three, honoring your hunger and eating enough. That is one that I struggle with. And just kind of like listening to myself. And that's one that now after, I, you know, I got in a bad habit just from not moving. You know, you don't leave the house for 365 days. And you're not doing a lot of moving. You don't eat as much. Like I didn't, I wasn't eating breakfast. Now here I am wanting to go freaking basically be in a squat position for four hours on the side of a mountain. Hmm. I'm going to need a little bit of nutrients in my body to get that done. And like, mm-hmm. I, I did, I experienced not having energy. Like it felt like, you know, one of the things that I think always helped me crush the final challenges is all the other girls. I would, I would watch this every season when we would do it, when I was in a final, the morning of the final would come or the day before the final. And it, I looked around and a lot of the other girls that were there, they eat like, oh, I'm just going to eat a little bit. I was carb loading. Like I would just be shoving my face because I'm like, this is going to be the only food that we're going to get for the next 48 hours. And we better like, you better eat. And I know that that is what helped me a lot of times, like have the energy to make it through because a lot of times it's not like you can have the muscle and you can have the strength, but if your body's running on no fuel, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You can't do it. So that's number three. Uh, Number four, taking regular breaks during the day. Hello. Number five, unfollowing social media accounts or people that negatively impact you. Number six, creating a healthy sleep routine. I should mention I was reading this at about three o'clock in the morning. So I was like, (laughs) "Ah, I know. Okay. Got it. Um, Taking rest and mental health days. Uh, number eight, taking time to process your emotions and honor your feelings. And number nine, not drinking alcohol to relieve stress or deal with uncomfortable emotions or anything else that is mm-hmm. numbing of those emotions, sure, whatever yeah. that may be. And mm-hmm. so for some people, that's being a workaholic. For some people, that's taking care of other people's problems and ignoring their own and saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm totally taking care of things. Taking care of other people is not the same as taking care of yourself. So... I thought this was such a good list and such a nice reminder that I know I really needed. And it feels like that's the last person I need to set boundaries with. Well, and because humans are so, you know, predictable and fuck up so much, we know that there will be backsliding and that there will be times when you're not following this advice but All I feel time. like if you get to a point where it's like internalized enough, then you just get back up. Like you say about how you don't like calling them New Year's resolutions Oh yeah, because it feels like all or nothing, but it doesn't yeah. need to be like that. You can just try harder tomorrow and it's not, you didn't fail. Yeah. You just get yeah. back and try again. Yeah. Ugh. Are we inspirational uh, coaches right now? I mean, are we? Oh Am gosh. I the Am female I? non-predatory Tony Robbins? <laughs> <laughs> I think oh my so. Gosh. I love it. It really is like all the pieces are coming together. So I'm so glad. Yes. I'm glad that you're feeling like that too. And that I I hope that our I would I would love t- for you guys to share in our uh, our Facebook group, the Brain Candy Crush, or on Instagram or Twitter with us. Like if you are having this feeling too, or if you're because this is just, I don't know, it's just cool to kind of talk about. Yeah. And like I said, because we've been on this show so long mm-hmm. and because people sort of felt like they grew up with us from the challenge and stuff, yes. I feel like we're on the same journey with these people. Totally. And it's so fun to watch that evolve over time longitudinally. Ah, oh, yes. I love Doing it. Doing good We're work, learning, everybody. Growing. Good work. Yeah, good work. All together. Good work. We are. Together. Oh, okay. So now on to some fun stories and things okay. like that. Yes. Um, I ha- speaking of good work, nice segue mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is just a cute little story that I absolutely love. And I don't even have the name of the person who's in it, but I'll just tell you this. So um, a girl, get woman, get, has uh, her bicycle stolen. And she's Is that girl's like, name Sarah? Yeah. Uh, I wish this were my story. And I, if my bike, knock on wood, ever were to get stolen again, I will 100% be doing this. So okay. her bicycle is stolen. And she, being the wise woman that she is, goes on Craigslist. And she <sighs> finds right. the bike. Yes. And so she 
sets up an appointment to go view the oh bike. Oh my god! And then <laughs> she views the bike, and she's like, "Hey, can I take it for a test drive?" And he goes, no. "Yeah, just don't ride off with it." And ride off with it is exactly what she motherfucking did. Stop. She was like, "Peace, I'm out of here." Hold and it. Stole I have her so many questions. Back. First of all, <laughs> did she mention, like, what about the bike made her certain it was hers? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure she would. No, it. Yeah, I but didn't. there were probably identifying features that made For it obvious. Sure. Okay. She knew that that bike was hers. And then I saw a picture of her. Um, I'll put up the post of the picture of her with the bike because it's really funny. She's like, and it said, sometimes two wrongs do make a right. My God. Isn't that funny? Okay. But then secondly, <laughs> well, would you, maybe she could have just called the cops. No, that, nope, no. As a recent uh, uh, victim of bike theft. Yeah. They don't do jack shit. They make a police report, and then they're like, okay, bye. And then, well, What if you called and said, hey, I found it. Can you come with me? I'm scared. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's a I, good point. But even me just saying that, I'm like, Susie, <laughs> grow balls for Pete's right. sake. Like, you, right. I'm scared, you guys. Can I'm you come scared. with me? Can you okay, come but with like, me? he could have had a gun. He's not. He doesn't have a gun. He's not. He's, just, he's selling a bike. He he's not a like gun. a murderer. You know, this is this is a a a, a crime of opportunity and yeah, okay. and somebody who just you know wanted like uh, in this economy. Yeah, you know, right, it makes right. sense. Like so, she just rode off with okay. it, and that's exactly what she did. I I wish like I found this on Good News Network, so it didn't yeah. have. I'm gonna like. I'm going to write down, look into bike stealing. (laughs) Detective Sarah's on it. Yeah, right. I just want to know, you know, and she's so proud. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to screenshot this and send this to you right this second because it's just so funny. Well, so did she, because you rode off and was she like, ding, ding, like on the little bike bell or something? It says my bike was stolen last week and yesterday I, oh, excuse me, I had a hiccup. My bike was stolen last week, and yesterday I saw it for sale on Craigslist. So I messaged the seller, met him at McDonald's. Oh, see, she met him in a public place. Smart girl. And when I noticed okay, it was 100% good. my bike, I dumbly asked to take it for a ride. He said, yeah, just don't ride off, which is exactly what I did. I stole my bike back. Oh, my God. And sh- the funny thing is, Sarah sent me the picture. It looks just like Sarah. I think that's why I stopped on it, because I was like, that is full Sarah energy. She is. <laughs> she totally like, like, is. It's total... Sarah vibes she's giving off with that proud look of like wow. I just got one over on somebody like but by I'm doing the right thing her. in a weird way yeah that's the thing it, you said two wrongs that's not wrong it's not wrong Mm-mm. so that is that not the cutest I this that just like made me laugh and I am happy <sighs> for her yeah but I and do she think have to go she took a little bit of a risk but at least it was in a public place that makes me feel better yeah McDonald's you know what if he chased her? That would be hilarious. Hilarious. What would she, she? She knows the bike. She's, uh, she just See, took this off is, on it. By the way, I mm. should thank you again for encouraging me to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, great. I just I texted it. Adam last night and I said, what did I do before Curb? I do not yes! know. Yes. Oh, guys, yeah, imagine so thank you. how much her life will be changed after she watches Interstellar. <laughs> I know. Okay, <laughs> but wait. And then... I when you were just telling this bike story, I'm like that is totally a Curb Your Enthusiasm plot. Yeah, that is definitely something Larry would do. Okay, is this great? When whenever you start watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, that is an excellent show to binge because yeah. your brain starts thinking of things yeah. in terms of what would yeah. like. I'll tell you what isn't a good show for that is Sopranos. Oh wow! When I binge watched The Sopranos, I was convinced that like everyone oh. was plotting to get me. Yes, like I, okay. I, I started getting suspicious. Like remember when I had oh god, it was so awful that situation that happened in Italy on the boat yes. when I got off the boat and the guy basically sexually assaulted me. Mm-hmm. I for a, because I was watching The Sopranos had oh. the crazy idea 
that maybe my husband set set him up. Maybe oh, he yeah, said because he that. was trying to teach me a lesson because he told me to not go off and on my own and that that was dangerous. And maybe he just sent like that's an insane thing to think. It was totally <laughs> because I was watching The Sopranos and like the exact same thing was going on on there. So you know, doesn't happen when I watch the Great British Baking Show. Uh, doesn't <laughs> happen when I watch. Uh, you know, right, I get what you're saying. But I do love how you know, like the brain will start going like, oh, that would be so funny. for cr- It's the best show for doing that to your brain. Because <laughs> then it's just so funny. Yeah, it's just realistic enough to be applicable, but just unrealistic enough to be hilarious. Yes. Like, uh, you know, and now we're just going to start talking about hilarious, know, Kirby, I enthusiasm stop. I wasn't going to bring no, it up. No, I'm going bad. to do it. I'm going to do it right now. Because I ha- the, the part that there's a, a bit in there where he gets in trouble somebody breaks into his house and then ends up falling in the pool and like hurting himself or maybe drowning in the pool yeah he drowned and he gets in trouble larry david gets in trouble yeah. because he didn't have, didn't a, fence have a fence up mm-hmm. around his pool yeah. which is an actual law in santa monica i believe right, right. like like they take real things that like you know like that story of the person who like fell through a glass window or something and like onto knives and then like in somebody's what? house and i don't know if this is something that i just heard or <laughs> this is like I, this could Seriously. be an, i don't fucking know anything but i i there's some story i heard of like somebody got injured while breaking and entering and then they sued the people oh, who they right. broke oh yeah broke yeah 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 that rings like, a bell this was a thing right yeah like an insane lawsuit example yeah 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 those kind of, oh you know what that's another perfect segue Okay, and let's see. Insane lawsuits. It. Okay. So this is one that kind of changed my mind. We this article insane was sent lawsuits. to us uh uh a while back. I I, can, I wish I could remember who said it. I need it. to add a caveat though, because whenever we do these, then people mistakenly think that we think that Americans are overly litigious and we do not. These are a very unusual anomalies oh yeah most people are not suing for silly reasons well and this what i'm going to talk about is uh an article that changed my mind on those kind of thing like those frivolous lawsuits you know there okay. were i think we talked a while oh, back yeah the coffee about spillage the, yeah yeah this coffee mm-hmm. spillage and how that was a really like people think it's a joke but that woman was seriously injured from that yes, that was correct like and it was skin. negligent and she did win the lawsuit yes <clears throat> so there is a long island lawyer who's pursuing nearly a hundred lawsuits over products labeled as vanilla oh yeah we did talk about this we did yeah oh my god is it yeah. official we've like gone all the way around all the <laughs> yeah, we're done in the whole world. we have That's no right. well, <laughs> no but i go. agree That's with it. this Back one up. I don't think I agree it's with this too. Yeah. Well, we're just going to have to talk about it again because yeah. somehow I didn't like <laughs> connect the dots. And so like maybe other people will be like right, right there with sure, me. Sure, yeah. So the problem is, is a lot of things say vanilla flavor, vanilla flavored with vanilla. And it's not even one of the main ingredients in it. It's not, it's that we're saying things are this because they smell like this but that's not what it actually is Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like that slippery slope or like where's the line like you say where's the line you know thing and it's misleading to describe it as like naturally flavored when it contains nothing like no vanilla actual like yeah it just has that beaver butthole thing (gasps) oh (laughs) that's right okay the anal glands of beavers have some sort of liquid that smells like vanilla and it's used in foods and hey i'm saying if that's in your ice cream just just tell me that i'll eat it i don't care right i'll eat beaver butthole right you know i don't care (laughs) i love that you said right yeah right i'm like oh well i ain't me so (laughs) far so good you are a real trooper it tastes delicious so you know yeah and it's like we're going to have to do something because <laughs> the the places where you know the the like the vanilla bean and the the real places where that come from we're not doing a very good job taking care of. I don't know how much longer we're going to have Madagascar vanilla beans cuz we're kind of like not doing a good job keeping Madagascar from climate change and you know just anywhere else that's lovely. Yeah. So yeah, oh it's not looking gosh. good. Not just it's for vanilla. It's not looking good. <laughs> Right, not just for vanilla. Oh, I read another article in Vice that said 
Um, look out, your favorite drugs, uh, uh, the climate crisis and everything that's happening is definitely affecting your favorite uh, uh, drugs, like coffee. What are my favorite drugs? Oh. Not yours, everybody's. Coffee, wine, and alcohol. No, I already said alcohol. Coffee, wine, and... Oh, what the heck was the Siggies? other one? It might be cigarette. It might be tobacco. Maybe. It said weed was one that is not going to be as affected, but question mark. We, it's mm-hmm. kind of complicated, they said. Yeah, this is article. why we can't have nice things. It is, but they said some psychedelics, no problem there. So, uh, you it's know, just good keep to doing know. That. It's like that, that's not going to be as affected by uh, climate change, I guess. And so. beaver buttholes, I think they're still thriving. Yeah. So I'm with this guy, the, the one. And, you know, let's put that. I don't know if I, if I put that or if we uh, linked that before. So I'm definitely going to make sure that that goes into our newsletter. <laughs> so because, we don't cover uh, it again. So I don't cover it again <laughs> and, uh, you know, talk about it. All. But, man, I feel like a lot of those lawsuits, those things, like we just read the headline in the article or headline. Yeah. And then we, you know. Yeah, I want to know what's in my food. And I really would love to know yes. what's in my makeup, which that <gasps> should be um, regulated also. F- yeah. For sure. Like it's really not good. No, what you put on your skin goes in your bloodstream. Come on now. Yeah, and like, oh, I saw a demonstration of a cracker put in mineral oil. Oh, what happened? And I was like, I'm never putting that shit on my face ever again. It, like, Wait, clogs- what's mineral oil? Mineral oil is like an oil, but it's in the base of of like every. Is it? It's in a lot of stuff. Oh, and it is very, I want to say like the word is hydrophobic maybe. It's really, it doesn't let any water in. And oh, it's so, like petroleum or something. Yeah. yeah. It creates mm-hmm. like this layer and it just like, you know, yeah, normally if you were to take need. like a Ritz cracker or something and why you would waste a Ritz on something like this, I don't know. But um that's just because I love Ritz crackers. That was a joke. Anyways, uh, <laughs> me and Harry Styles are the only people who laugh at you at that. Uh, so you put the cracker in water and it will just absorb the water and then like get mushy and sink to the bottom. You put like mineral water and then a, like mineral oil over the surface and then put the cracker in there. Like it'll never get wet. Oh, penetrate. And it just like mm. looks, I'm just like, ugh, that just sitting on top of my skin. It's just like nasty. Yeah, I started but, reading an article about how we ought to be cre- stopping creating new chemicals because we are creating them at a rate that's unreal, like even from the 1950s to now and then what they predict for 2050 oh. in terms of synthetic man-made chemicals. Oh. And it's just not sustainable for yeah. human populations. Look at what fucking happened with the... the <sighs> What's that stuff called? It's going to be a bunch of letters now. I don't know. But um, the stuff that's in Teflon and... You know, like 3M, yeah. there was that huge th- – they did the documentary about it where all yeah. the people's teeth were nasty mm-hmm. and Mark Ruffalo was in it. It was so – I think it was Mark Ruffalo. It was so good. I can't – oh, black – dark – dark water, black – fuck, I have no idea. This is great. It but was I really – I had to quit reading the, the article because I was like, ah, I there's nothing I can do about this and I just don't want to know. <sighs> oh. Yeah, don't. Blah, 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 Sometimes you got to know your limits. Like I can only do so much over here, right? Um, okay, so let's talk about something that is um, not as worrying or as troublesome. Uh, did you ever notice that the watches in every single advertisement are always at ten ten? Yes, Susie. Yes, I didn't know this was this a thing. Is a thing, right? This was my mom. We were talking about like, oh, what should I talk about on the podcast? Like while we yes. were in Costa Rica or something. And she was like, hey, do you think for the show you can find out why every advertising always has the hands at 1010? Yeah. It, it was like totally new information to me. Like, yeah. Wait, what do you mean? And then once she said it, I couldn't. And you're think talking of- about like analog clocks, not digital. Yes. Yeah. Analog clocks. So, oh, you know what? I wonder if they just do ten ten on the digital ones just to like for good measure. I don't know, but they in all the advertising for like Rolex or Omega or Timex or whatever it is, they always all the timepieces will almost certainly be set to ten ten. Yes, that so there's like real reasons for this, and I yeah. I 
more than just like I love things like this where it's it's this subliminal message. Yeah, exactly. That we haven't picked up mm-hmm. that it ha- we've been exposed to for so long but if we change it which timex did a while back a long time ago maybe in like the uh who knows it doesn't say but they tried it um they they flipped it over and they set the time they used to set their time to eight twenty in their advertising mm-hmm. photos and it was determined that it looked like a frown yeah sad face so people were like no that watch is sad yeah i want a happy watch yes what Right? We're so we stupid. We consider that it's smiling rather well, than having a sad face. Mm-hmm. And so it also like, the, you know, kind of like shows a symmetry and a balance of the clock, which, you know, I understand. But they also say, this article also argued, this is on medium.com, that there's another appealing point, uh, and that's the, it, it's in the position of a letter V, which is expressing victory. And we have this, oh, like, funny. we have this... It's the same, you know how we do that pose, that victory pose. Oh my god, I just tried to do it. My arms are so sore from snowboarding. Oh god, why See? my arms? Can somebody tell me? Yeah, tell me. Wh- my shoulder. I cannot oh, lift no. my arms up. Oh, it's good. It's good. I just need to use those muscles more. <sighs> I'm trying to do the victory pose. Yes, there we go. I got it. That's like a V, and so our brain naturally, I don't know, tends to. I don't know why that is. Yeah, our brain associates positivity and success oh. with that motion of our arms. And with the I, letter V. I was reading an article about why humans l- like are inclined to find faces on oh, objects. I love that. What's the name? Of, I, can't, I can never remember the name of it. Like anthropomorphize? Nah, there's a specific name for seeing faces and things. Oh, I don't know. It was okay, just like about evolution and how babies need yeah. to be able to f- notice and be drawn toward faces because that's how they survive and whatever. But like the fact that we're doing it with clocks on commercials and are not even aware of it, it's pretty, yeah. pretty bonky. And kind of like the Amazon logo. Yeah. That's a right. smiley face. Yeah. Yep. A to Z. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, a little, uh, what do you call it? Like urban legend, I guess, or mm-hmm. what are they called? What, yeah. what the heck is the, An I urban guess urban legend. Le- mm-hmm. Maybe that's it. Uh, uh, is that the, they thought people, many people thought that the time pieces were set to honor Abraham Lincoln's death. They people no. thought it was at 10, 10. Oh, yeah. Boy. I don't know where they would come up with that. 10, like, 10, 10 p.m.? That guy kept late hours. But <laughs> At the but theater that late? He was shot at 10, 15. But he died the next morning around 7, 22. Wow. I'm there just was, saying, he was out late. Myth. That's the freaking word I'm looking for. Why couldn't my brain think of myth? Myth. That is yeah. the word. Uh, yeah. There's another myth about the atomic bomb. Uh, and it oh, says yeah, that and all those it was dropped at 10, stopped. 10. But mm-hmm. it, it, no, that was not. It was actually dropped at 11, 02. So that myth's out. As well, at eleven oh two, yeah, right, 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 yeah. It the the um the answer for why we do it is far less interesting and embarrassing for humans. Right, it's just like no, it doesn't look like a sad. Ha- uh, <laughs> yeah, that clock happy. looks sad. That clock looks sad. <laughs> yes, huh. I love that Sally gave you homework. Oh, she's been yeah. Well, I also ask for it. You know, I'm like, hey, if you mm-hmm. see anything good, send it. You know, send me, send it my way. Yeah. And, these the are the kind of fun know what we like to. Yeah, and she's definitely a brainiac. Oh my gosh, there's somebody posing right now. I I think I got their account shut down or we collectively brainiacs too. Thanks guys. But somebody was posing as my mom on Instagram at like trying to give people psychic readings. I can't. I know. What the hell? And I like know. did anyone buy a reading from this bozo? I don't think so. I hope not, but you know, my you mom was like, oh, they're going to know real quick. Because a few people, a few of our uh, listeners or followers sent me messages. And then some people said that they, this person tried to offer them a reading. Oh, yeah. They're aggressive, those people. They're really aggressive. And I was like, oh, what? And my mom was like, I've been hacked. I'm like, mom, you haven't been hacked. I've been but, hacked. Yeah. But, I love uh, it. Yeah. It's like, not quite hacked, but, you know. I just, I mean, okay, let me ask you this about Sally's business. Yes. 
Sally, Sarah's mom, is a psychic reader. Correct. And um, what do you think is like the number of clients that she might have oh. a range at uh, any given time? Like She's one, probably got, 50? no, no. She's probably got like 10 to 12 that are like regulars. Like same as a therapist kind of. I wouldn't say they're weekly. I would say they're more mm. monthly, maybe. And then she gets ones here and there. And then she gets things like um, sometimes she gets families or groups or people who want like family sessions. Not like to all together, but like oh, oh, oh. like she did a reading for my downstairs neighbor, and she was like had a really amazing experience and was really moved. And then so she got a session for her daughter and her brother and like her son or something. Oh, okay, yeah. And so it's kind of like, you know, but and I'd then when say, she let's say she no. needs more clients, you know, just wants to stay busy or whatever. Does she just ask spirit to bring them or does she market or how does that go? I don't think she's ever, I don't she's think she's never she, had a I slump. think it just kind of comes her way. Yeah. And okay. just, you know, and she did get psychic of the month last month. So shout out oh to God. Sally for being that psychic is... of the month with America's best psychics. Would she get a certificate or something? I don't know. Some like mention on the page or something like that it's i said so nice. i was like oh mom that's so that's so great she's like no it's, it's stupid but i was like no, yeah no, it's great you know i did hear my mom like i heard i i have a lot of respect for for how she oh my god what? you will never believe who's calling me right now who derek from the challenge you need to get it should i okay i'm gonna answer okay uh, okay, um, okay, so Sarah just took a call from Derek. We will be yes. talking about that on 15 Minutes of Blame, yes, which is on patreon.com slash brain candy. That's where all our challenge content lives. Um, but anyway, we need to wrap it up, wind it down, as they say. Yes. Any hoot Wind also. it down. We talked about the girl who stole her bike back. Good story. Yeah, feel good. Feel good talked story. Talked about me transitioning to Colorado and getting acclimated to this freezing temperatures <laughs> and getting Toronto. acclimated to life in her 30s yeah. where she oh. may or may not need knee pads no do it's not may or do. may not may i may did you, i 100%. did i correctly hear you that they I already ordered your them. knees are black and blue oh, absolutely yeah that's like i can't do like this. let me see what they look like they're uh they're gonna be black and blue tomorrow they're they're mm-hmm kind of reddish oh god like they're they're sore they're just i'm just i'm ba- i'm i'm exactly what here's the thing what i also realized after taking that little fall i'm also watching simultaneously watching the x games right now so and they people fall all the time and you just have to accept that pain is going to come with yeah you're going to hurt a little bit that's part of the, uh, this is how it goes like it's like you're a little sore after and there's something i kind of like about that like, not I the imagine, pain, but, like, I don't know. To feel alive. To feel alive, Susie. <laughs> That's it. I love it. I think it kind of reminds me of what I think about scuba diving because it's such Ooh. a pain in the ass. You have totally. all of this equipment. It's a little bit scary. But yes. it's, you know, if you <sighs> like what, what you experience, it's worth it. You know, the, the peace so and the adventure, whatever. It's, there is, uh, that's why I just, I can't wait till I am as good as I want to be. I I can't wait till my actual abilities and skills match the person that I see snowboarding my head because Mm -hmm. (laughs) my mind, I am great. And, uh, I just, I have to, you know, just practice, practice, practice. But when, when I'm like in, when I have a good run and when I'm like just hitting the turns and, and really like in the zone, it's like you feel like you're flying. You're like, yeah. It's magical, and the trees, mm-hmm. and it's beautiful, and like it feels so good. And the cold air, and the you're oh, it feels so good. And the gondola ride up is, and like the the chairlift is so fun. It and must be really, really fun for people to tolerate all the bullshit. 
<laughs> you're I mean, so, for real. You're hundred percent right. It is. <laughs> it must be because there is so much bullshit involved. Yeah. It like, and I feel for any parents who take mm-hmm. their like parents who take kids must My. love skiing. My mom. <laughs> I think you're saying must love their kids. It because like no. They don't love their kids. They send their kids to ski school. Like, or do, like, oh. to, they don't hang out with them. Not, well, sometimes they do. Well, but, why, why is it hard to take your kid? I don't get it. Oh, because every kid is complaining about, well, if you're anything like me when I was little, there's always that kid who's like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually this as an adult. I lose my mittens all the time. I was telling the guy <laughs> I'm on a mittens. date with, I'm like, all the time. I'm like, I need one of those mitten clips. Like, and he was like, well, yeah. don't, or we'll get you a mitten clip. I'm like, oh I'm like God. a little kid. And then like, I drop my gloves and there's like, an actual child picked them up from under the table and was like, here, you dropped your mittens. No. I'm not kidding. I'm like, yeah, oh my okay. God, the children right. are. Cl-. So like, there's always that kid. And then there's like the one who's like crying oh, and God. it's cold. And then they sit in the snow and then they're like, oh, I'm wet. And like, then it, like they're. Yeah, they're hot. It, they're cold. They're the, tired. Yeah, whatever. it's a okay. whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then there's, they're always crying. Like I, I, they're every, you can hear that. That is a thing, uh, you know, cause it's All miserable. Right. You know, and I was that kid. My brothers were like, it's fine. And I was like, oh, I want to go in. And like, All right. Well, at least I know what I'm in for. Yeah. So, so. Okay. It's got it. So it is wonderful if you can put up with all that bullshit. Yeah. It's great. Aside from everything terrible, it's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any hoodles. So stay tuned and make sure you get, make sure you join our Let's Get Social. Yeah. Uh, level, level on patreon mm-hmm. because that is where, That's where if you at. wonder what i look like snowboarding like what is it what <laughs> is, like you can see all my skills like you you can follow the journey and maybe every now and then um i will put up a video of me eating shit because i definitely <laughs> do that every now and then <laughs> well because you know i'm going skiing for adam's birthday yes and i've never skied or snowboarded and as you can hear in my voice like i'm scared and all that and um you're gonna be fine i'm sure it'll be a journey for me as well sis you're gonna be absolutely fine go skiing oh really is way, well, way easier oh god okay i think oh my god i don't know i haven't been skiing in like 20 years <laughs> oh my god but oh, when i was little god. my mom made us learn to parallel ski before we were allowed to snowboard because parallel ski is that yeah, like parallel like, parking no it's like where your skis are next to each other so you can go down the mountain and kind of like snow plow where they're pointed in almost a v-shape and that's how you kind of go down slow but when you start to get you know real like better you want to be able to be at the point where your skis are almost parallel to each other when you're turning and she said you know, th- when we wanted to snowboard when we were little, like my mom started us skiing when we were really little. And we, like I, real quick, I was like, oh, skiing is stupid. All the cool kids are snowboarding. This is like when snowboarding was like being, like coming onto the scene, like brand mm-hmm. new. And all the cool, but there was like a l- different look. I was like, oh, I want to do that. And my mom was like, I'm not going to pay for you to get all that gear and equipment, like, and then hate it and be miserable and not do it so she was like no you're gonna learn how to do this kind of skiing and when you can ski to that level and ability then you can switch over to snowboarding and so i learned how to ski real quick and to that did that and then switched over to snowboarding and damn was she right the first like i don't know five years i was miserable and cold and sucked and she's like nah i'm not getting you a lesson you're just gonna learn and uh and yeah, now here we are. And so <sighs> skiing, is, if, skiing's way e- no, skiing's way easier. You could totally do it. Yeah, but Lincoln wants to snowboard, and so I told yeah, him but I'd he take can, a lesson so, with him. Oh. Yeah, well, okay. Oh, if God. We're starting, then you, you're great. <laughs> you're like, uh-oh, she's in too deep, so I'm going to Well, I just pivot. mean, like, skiing's easier. Yeah, that's what I want. Because, like, you don't have to... It gets sketchy to turn your body, like... Oh my god! In the Let's way that talking. your sword is like straight, at, pointing straight down the mountain. Woo! That always scares me a little. Okay. Anyways. Oh my god! I'm gonna right, get people. wound up. We're supposed to be winding it down. We love you all, and don't forget to check out our Patreon and leave us a five star review and subscribe to the show. Bye. Bye. Bye.